Hello. Hello. In this uh, video, uh, second in the series on scoring of uh, TAT, I would like to explain the rationale behind the scoring. Uh, when a person is uh, shown a picture, like an elderly gentleman showing his hand to a young person in the picture, and you are asked to write a story, or somebody working alone on a table with a photograph in front of him or her, you are asked to write a story, or a group of people apparently working in a farm or in a factory or discussing in a, seem to be like discussing in a meeting, you are asked to write a story. These are all three different situations I have highlighted. One is a situation where there are two people involved. Another is a situation where one person is already is only involved. And third is a situation where a group of people are there. Now, these are typically the kind of situations. Either when you are working, you are working alone, or you are discussing with another person, or you are working in a team. Uh, normally, these pictures are uh, supposed to arouse your need, arouse. So when you are asked to write a story in an individual setting or in a two-person setting or in a group setting, it uh, gives rise to your thinking um, the way you normally think. So suppose, let's take the two-person situation where there is an elderly gentleman and an young person. The elderly gentleman is showing his hand, his hand like this, uh, like this. And then the younger gentleman is uh, maybe uh, maybe listening to him or not listening to him, etc. I left for your interpretation, which is the picture. Suppose you are uh, you have a high need for achievement. Let us assume that you have a very high need for achievement, a focused need, not diluted need. I think you have achieved all the other motives and so on. So you are all the time dreaming about doing something different doing something difficult, doing something challenging and establish uh, yourself and your identity as a great achiever uh, or a remarkable kind of a person who has been able to demonstrate something to the rest of the world. Uh, maybe a scientist, maybe an entrepreneur, maybe uh, success in completing a project, anything. Uh, if you are driven extremely by that, then in a picture where an elderly gentleman and an young person are shown, you will start attributing achievement motivation either to the father or to the son. I'm using the term father or maybe I think it can take it as a boss or you can take it as a, a stranger. Uh, the elderly gentleman uh, whom you can say is a father or a boss or somebody uh, is highly achievement driven and he is trying to instill the same kind of a spirit in the young person, whereas the young person may be wanting to do something else or the young person also is interested in achieving something unique, something different. So they are discussing about what, what are the ways in which this particular thing which either the elderly gentleman wants the young fellow to achieve or the young fellow wants himself to achieve is being talked about. So you will attribute the theme of the two people you see in the picture as discussing something unique, something difficult, something uh, challenging, something to be accomplished and so on. So that means if you are achievement driven, you will write an achievement oriented story. Suppose you are not achievement driven, you are more uh, driven by love, affection, you have a high need for warmth, affection and so on. So you are likely to uh, therefore depict these two people as maybe a father and a son or maybe uh, uh, somebody uh, who is advising the younger person to go back home and be with his uh, parents or with, be with his loved ones or he is advising him to, uh, let us say, to restore the relationships which were lost with his maybe a spouse or with uh, parents or with brothers and sisters and so on. They, I think the attribution here to either the elderly gentleman or to the younger person shown in the picture is the need for affiliation because you are at the time concerned about you are missing somebody, you are concerned about relationships and so on. So therefore you write a story around relationships. But suppose you have a uh, 
undiffused, highly focused need for influencing somebody else. That means you want to dominate the thinking of somebody else. You could be an young person wanting to dominate the thinking of the elderly gentleman or you may be an elderly person writing the story wanting to influence the thinking of the younger uh, person. Now again here you can use two methods. One method is you can say that the elderly person is a highly experienced person, he has a lot of wisdom, a lot of experience to share. The younger person is in a dilemma, he is wanting to uh, solve something and therefore the elderly person is advising him the consequences of uh, the choice which the younger person is trying to make. Um, or maybe the younger person wants to make a choice and the elderly gentleman is interfering with him. The younger person does not want to be interfered. The younger person wants to exercise his own control. He wants to determine his own life and things like that. In both cases, whether it is positive or negative, one person in the picture is trying to influence the thinking of the other and that can be the elderly person or the younger person which shows that this is a need for power is operational. Now the way the need for power is depicted is it for the sake of uh, a larger cause for the country or for the welfare of for the larger society or for his group or for his organization etc. will determine whether this need for power is social power or is it personal power. Uh, if the need is more, the elderly gentleman is exercising his uh, prerogative as the CEO or the eldest member of the family and wants his uh, son to listen or the junior to listen and follow the rules etc. etc. And we say it is a concern for personal power, otherwise it is social power and so on. I think it is the nature of depiction of the character and the concerns of the character that decide the motive that you are reflecting. In other words, the story writer by choosing a particular goal, a particular goal attributed to one of the characters in the picture he is revealing his own kind of a goal. Now the motives or the needs are inferred by the goal. Every need has a goal. Like the need for food has a goal of uh, fulfilling your hunger by going to a restaurant and eating. Uh, the need for achievement has a goal of completing a particular kind of a task so that it can uh, put you uh, in the in, in a seat of accomplishment and uh, you will have a satisfaction that you have done something unique, something different. So every motive has a goal. So therefore we normally look for what is the goal of one of the persons. Sometimes the goal can be inferred indirectly or it may be stated. Somebody need not use the term goal but you can say he is always interested, he is striving to do this. He, so, so many terms can be used which indicate that one of the characters definitely has a goal. Now, this goal can be an achievement goal, an affiliation goal, a power goal, an extension goal or it can be a goal of, uh, let us say, nurturance goal, aggression goal which, is, which comes closer to, I think, the power and things of that kind and so on. So, from the kind of concerns one of the characters in the story is depicted by the, the story writer, you can infer what is it that the story writer seemed to be at that point of time driven by. What is the kind of motivation the story writer is indicating in the kind of story that he has written. That is why we score for, if it is achievement concern, you score for need achievement. If it is affection, warmth, need affiliation, if it is need for dependence, somebody is wanting to depend or need for independence, you score for need for independence. And you can of course attribute some terms, but I think normally there are about 20 to 30 kind of different needs that are identified at some point in time we can have a look at it. But in managerial life you don't look for so many things. You only look for about half a dozen, uh, about 5 to 10 kind of things. Like you may say, this person has a need for independence, need for perseverance, need for uh, uh, influence, etc., etc., and things like that. So the first starting point uh, of assessment of TAT is to read the story and identify uh, one goal or maybe sometimes there are multiple goals. Different people can have different goals because uh, the story writer may not have only single unfocused or uh, single focused need he, the story writer could also have multiple needs 
That is why it is said, if it is a diffuse need, that means you will have more than one need reflected in the story. So you will start looking for what are the multiple needs. So you can say affiliation as well as achievement. Or you can say achievement as well as power. Or achievement as well as extension motivation and so on. So it is always possible to look at combinations of motives. Uh, that is why we said motives can be diffused or they can be focal. Motives can be internal or they can also be external and things like that. So the first thing that we look for is what is the main theme or main themes or the goals of the character. One character, you can identify a hero in the story, you can identify more than one uh, focal uh, character in the story and then assess the kind of goals that are required. That is just the starting point of assessment of uh, a story. In the subsequent talks, we will start looking at how do we professionally and systematically assess the, uh, the stories for uh, the uh, kind of motives that we look at. So before I go on to that, I will talk about, I will give you a list of motives so that when you assess the stories, you start looking for these motives.